Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 285, and our topic today is Luciferian Influence. Scripture indicates when they appear to take over the surface world, the Luciferian influence will captivate the human race. Mm -hmm. Revelation 17, verse 8. What we're doing tonight is looking at the effect, direct contact with the Luciferians is going to have on the destiny of the human race, both individually and collectively. <clears throat> the Beast of Death Sauce was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder. Word wonder there literally means be in awe. Whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is and is not and yet is. It's talking about the vast expanse of effect that these beings are going to have on people. We can't, at this point where we are, we can really not comprehend it. We'll read about it and we'll have an idea, but we won't have a granule of a real comprehension until we begin to witness it. In exactly. reality. Because it's the mystery of iniquity. Yes. Right. Is that effect such that the person can no longer comprehend anything? They can't think for themselves. Well, that's ultimately where it's going to go. But the inference is that it's going to be... Remember what the scripture tells us. The fourth empire is diverse from any other kingdom that's ever been on in contact up to that point with the human race. It's going to bring out realities, conditions that man has never experienced before. Brings us to the next principle. Scripture teaches, although they are in reality evil, abhorrent detestations in the sight of God, to humans they will be captivating objects of veneration. So there's no objectivity at all at this point? No, not at all. Revelation 17, verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the Mother of Harlots, and Abominations of the Earth. Now, who wrote this? It says there was a name written upon it. John. John. <laughs> no. John's just recording it. Oh, the... That's the, that's, that's the Elohim. Yes. What it's doing is telling us what it is in ab objectivity, what she really is. She doesn't write it. It's giving us what the, 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 the view from God of her is. And that is, she is the worst detestation that has every detestation. In other words, what it's saying here, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, and abominations. This is the origin of every lie and heresy and abomination that's ever been spawned upon the earth. This detestation is responsible for it. Mm. Yes. Does her detestation go in to extend into eternity? Sure. Okay. So she is the root of all evil then? Yes. Exactly. So back to the objectivity. No one can see it except for John. Um, John's the last one can see it, which we're going to go into. Hold it, hold the thought, hold the thought, 
Who would have thought? It's not John that sees it, it's the Holy Spirit that's seeing it. Okay. Uh, how does John see it? Well, <clears throat> Revelation 17, verse 2. We see the effect on the human race. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So this is the effect that it has on the human race. <clears throat> the whole human race is caught up mesmerized, totally subjected to this woman. What is it What is it that they see? Drop down to verse 6. Uh, just a minute. Yeah. Yes. So, Mr. Jones, I, I'm having a little trouble believing that her evil extends all the way into eternity as well. Because it's it's too, it's too close to God. I mean, I don't, I don't see it. The woman, the woman is, <coughs> is in the spiritual realm to begin with. The spiritual realm is eternity. There's no time there. <coughs> the things that come from the woman. The fourth empire is not a human time-centered state. But it is limited to the secondary creation. Yes. Yes. In the spiritual realm. Spiritual realm. It will forever be a detestation. It will, it will never change. It will be what it is. It's going to be destroyed. And God is showing us here what it really looks like from an objective. If you could see it from God's perspective, it would be abhorrent to you. Mm. But the, 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 the stock and trade of this is that she has the ability to project just the opposite. Let me pick up on what you just said. It's in the spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. I understand that to mean the primary creation. Yes. How is it then that we see something corrupt and dark in the primary creation? Well, it's corrupt and dark in the primary creation. was cast out the primary creation to the okay, secondary creation, like all the okay. rest of the Luciferians. Okay. You meant at the point of, of its when origin? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. yes. So this is before uh, Liz's first fall? Yes. Okay. What you see here, by what is being said, the mother of abomination right. during the Luciferian era, right. this city was corrupting gotcha. the whole uh, gotcha. landscape. Okay. So his reactions were from her influence. Well, he's the founder of the city. And so it's a combination here of a symbiosis in which... <clears throat> The Luciferians, the high ones, the immortals, and Lucifer combined after the corruption set in. He got he was the first one corrupted. He corrupts everything else, basically the city, and the city corrupts everything else right. around it, and everything else around it it's a chain reaction okay. scenario. So you could even say that the, the Harlot City is the system. Yes. The, ba the Babylon system. It, yes. That, that's it. Yes. Or at least that's the genesis of it. That's why it's called Babylon. Okay. And that's why it's called his city. He gives rule to the Antichrist and all the power and everything. So it's, it's his doing, if you will, on a level in which all the creation is being affected, has been affected. Mm. Yes. So we see if he is the would you say he, he, he originated the city or whatever? So so now she is under him because she's influenced because of the city that he's in. So now we also know that there are other beings, the the uh, the god, Eloah, mm -hmm. that are above the god of war, are above Lucifer. They're they're stronger than him. Yeah, but they're in prison. They don't come up until after the city does its thing. They destroy the city. Along with the beast. Right, along with the beast. Yeah. But why is it that the, well, their agenda isn't worse than his to, well, it actually is, 666. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As you were saying, the mystery of iniquity is going to be released in phases. And you're looking at a phase here, it's the first phase. That was the beginning of the tribulation period. It's going to wipe out the human order. 
and dominate the landscape for a protracted period of time until it's overthrown by the ones you just talked about who are currently subjected to this because they're still in bondage, they're still in prison. In that respect, we want to... Yeah, go ahead. No, uh, the mystery of iniquity. Yeah. I just wanted to, mm -hmm. you know, we are going to understand it because we are the stewards of the mysteries of God. Mm -hmm. So we're going to understand it. Yes. I want to address your comment. <clears throat> Drop down to verse 6. <clears throat> And I saw the woman drunken <clears throat> with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, repeat that, when I saw her, when I saw her, mm -hmm. I wondered with great admiration. John is mesmerized just like everybody else. This just goes to show the influence of this entity. The So... Because John is a created being, he is caught up in, in, in the, the majesty, if you will, of her. But us being God's sons, we aren't going to get caught up in that. We're going to understand it for what it is. Or, John could have understood it for what it is. He's right there with the Holy Spirit. But he allows himself. This is the principle. If you allow it to influence you, it's going to influence you. Now John sees what she's doing. Wiping out, killing, slaughtering Christians. That should have an adverse effect upon his thinking. But he is so caught up and mesmerized with her beauty. He's transfixed. That even the angel says, why did you stand in awe of this creature? Let me show you what they're all about. Yeah. That's a warning to us. Never, never underestimate the influence of the enemy. The word beauty is used to describe that which gives awe. Is that glory? Is that how you would describe it? Could you replace glory with the word beauty? No. Glory connotes power, majesty. What, what is this then? Influence. This is a, an alluring attraction. Alluring. Darkness. This is I'd an say. allurement. That's all evil <laughs> has. is ability to imitate true beauty, true purity. It's a pseudo imitation, but it is so powerful it's a snare. that the individual can go, fly to it like a fly uh, okay. to... A manipulation of darkness. Honey, yes. Okay. Yes. And what we're looking at here, if this can affect John, who is in heaven, at the sight of the angel, under the power of the Holy Spirit, what is it doing to the humans on earth? Mm -hmm. It's an object lesson. You can't let your shield down. You can't afford what John is doing. He's looking at it from a human perspective. He's not allowing the power of the spirits to override the senses. And that's why the angel of Manchu said, the angel is basically saying, you know better. I'm going to show you this, 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 and this. And then John sees it. Okay. It's an object lesson for everybody. When this thing, as we approach the period of the onset of the fourth empire, coming in contact with these beings, <clears throat> you have to do it from the perspective of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Good. When the elders are tested just before the rapture <clears throat> is the intensity the degree of the influence that john is experiencing here the same as then or would it be greater it will be at the point in which um well this will take place uh at the time of uh, this this takes place after the rapture mm -hmm. <coughs> but you're going to have an increase like paul says in the mystery of iniquity. Its influence is going to increase, 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 increase until it hits that point where only those under under the Holy Spirit can endure it and go in and dominate it. The, uh, the whole aspect of this 
is letting us know what the human race is in for <coughs> wholesale because of its ignorance and its willingness to remain ignorant. If they can do what they're doing now and you can't see them, <coughs> the influence <coughs> of these guys never well I'm going to say never went away but it was greatly diminished but it's there people are still coming under that's why they're seeking drugs that's why they're seeking all this other stuff it's an alluring thing that brings a spirit into bondage on the spiritual level and only the wise can see it for what it is <coughs> let's go on <coughs> Scripture teaches these fallen beings will curry favor with the human race. 2 Corinthians 11th chapter, verse 14. No marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. It's basically a permanent transformation. He's going to be perceived as an angel of light when he makes his appearance with the other kings of the Fourth Empire. Yes. The word transformed. <coughs> what is that? Comes from the Greek term metamorphosis. It means to change. Same word when Jesus was transformed on the Mount of Transformation into this glorified uh, glory. He so he self-wills this transformation? Sure. Sure. It's all a pseudo. It's a master imitator of the things of God. Yeah. And by putting that guise on, he's going to trap those that are not wise. Yes. Yes, yes indeed. He's going to carve out himself an empire on earth. Uh, he's going to be worshipped. He's going to have his own religion, synagogue of Satan. He's going to be uh, uh, worshipped by the masses. You see that in Revelation 13. They worship the dragon. They gave power to the beast. They look at him as a magnificent being of light. Well, you heard what uh, the Pope said. <laughs> it's wolf in sheep's clothing. Yeah, well, he make, makes a statement, Lucifer is going to appear soon. He's right, he is. So he's getting his people prepared to worship him when he makes his appearance. Turn to <coughs> Deuteronomy 32, verse 37 and 38. This is going to happen across the board. People are going to be caught under the allure, the influence. <coughs> of these Luciferians and they are going to uh, basically uh, turn it back on uh, YHVH Deuteronomy 32 37 to 38 And he shall say, so my wife, VH, where are their gods? The rock in whom they trusted, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. So these are people that <clears throat> went out of their way to curry favor of these beings. Offered up the sacrifice to them. Doesn't tell what they sacrificed. It might have been their own children. We don't know. They offered them drink. They offered them meat. They offered them the fruit of their labors. They offered them anything these creatures wanted in turn for their favor. Why? Because they were so caught up, so mesmerized with the being. You see that even now in the UFO phenomenon. People get abducted 
and they talk about these creatures walk up to them and see right into their souls. They can <clears throat> manipulate their minds, put thoughts in, take thoughts out, wipe their memory out, whatever they want to. If these lowly <clears throat> greys can do that, what do you think these beings are capable of doing? Well, let's go on. <clears throat> Jonesy, what's emulation? Imitation. Okay. Emulation is imitation. Yes. Okay. When you emulate something, you're imitating it. You're trying to take on the same way functioning of whatever it is that you're doing in that response. You're following it, formulating, conforming your manifestation to its manifestation. That's the word that kept coming to me as Satan is going to transform himself into an angel of light. Mm -hmm. Emulating. Now what we find here, it's going to be so ingrained that it's going to be forever, even when God himself appears in all his glory, they're going to be so stamped and sealed with the influence of these beings. Turn to Revelation 9th chapter verse 20. They literally steal the soul of the human race. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, daimon, supernatural beings, and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Now why are they worshiping things they can't see nor hear nor walk? They're not worshiping the thing itself, they're worshiping what it represents. Which was something they made contact with that's long gone, but they are connected to it to the point where they are totally given over to it. That's why you have in Israel, <coughs> in uh, Exodus, they want to form a, a golden calf. They want to construct an image of the idols of Egypt, right. which represents a being that they're trying to placate, curry favor with. Just as they did it then, they're going to do it here. Turn to Revelation 13. Just before we turn to Revelation, just before we turn that. Mm -hmm. So the, <coughs> the being, God's small G's, from that perspective, do they receive the worship that is being presented to the idol of that being? If they're on the spot, yeah. But only if they're on the spot. Yeah. Okay. If they're not there, no. Then, then no, they can't. Okay. <clears throat> and it turns that they've gone on to bigger and better things. Revelation 13, starting verse 6. Down to verse 8. <coughs> And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Now he's looking up at God the Father, God the Son, <clears throat> the Prototokia saints are looking down on the earth and he's shaking his fist, he's cursing, he's swearing, he's doing blaspheming anything and everything he possibly can to <clears throat> bring despite ridicule, uh, uh, a blasphemy against God the Creator, which the whole human race is there watching what he's doing. So is this the false prophet or who is this? This is the beast. The Antichrist did. Got chained. 
Okay, so it's the, it's the transformed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Drop down to verse eight. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, the beast, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. This is giving a picture of just how far this Luciferian influence is going to take the human race. It's going to so convolute man's thinking with a false reality, false influence, collocating into the soul of men. They're going to look up at the Creator, the glorious sinless, <coughs> wonderful God, and hear this despicable detestation, curse and swear and blaspheme, and they're going to applaud Him and sit down and bow down and worship Him and do the same thing to God that He's doing. They're going to hate God, they're going to despise Him, so that by the time these same people, the humans, <clears throat> going to face the returning army of heaven at Armageddon and so be filled with hate for returning Jesus Christ <clears throat> that they are going to the, 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 the eyes are going to be red their mouth filled with hatred cursing and swearing and wanting to tear apart the armies of God that they're just going to get wiped out, totally erased from the face of the earth. Yes. So as you're speaking, Josie, I'm seeing this supernatural um, world that we're going to live in. However, I'm so I'm wondering, how is it that the the humans are going to break free from what they're seeing? Is it's so superior to them that, that, that they're going to want to anything that's superior to them, they're going to want to find out about. Okay. So now we also know that. The subtlety of the perception of what they're looking at, they don't understand it. They just see the majesty, the 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 excellency, the higher being part. So they're going to be drawn to it, necessitating the restrainer. Now the restrainer is going to give people a buffer to where they can see what it is that they are viewing. They're going to have an insight in. Um, and thank God for that. The strain is only going to benefit <coughs> the Christian, those that's filled with the Spirit. <laughs> those that aren't filled with the Spirit, they're not never going to see it for what but it is. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. So. And, in, and in that respect, <coughs> this is what it's going to lead to. It's going to be incremental to a point that will lead them down to total destruction. The, what's the antidote? The antidote is if you are not prepared by the time this thing is encountered, there's no hope. The only way that they would have any hope is that this side they're making an appearance, the person gets born again so he's got the spirit in him. If he not got the spirit in him, he's done. And you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's for the one that has the spirit in him. The one that doesn't, he's done. He's uh, it's just going to be a progressive continuation until, however way you're destroyed, uh, you meet your fate. That's what the scripture is consistently telling us. Now is the time to seek the Lord. Now is the time to call upon the Lord. We read it in, Ze in Zephaniah. If you are a person who has any degree of humility, do it now before the, the, the judgment is pronounced. Because after it's pronounced, it's too late. We are looking at the destiny of the whole human race. Who out here are under... An influence anyway, but <clears throat> no, uh, no comparison to the influence they're going to be under at this time. Because at this time, they're still under the age of grace. <clears throat> you can get saved. 
you can receive the Lord. You can be, be protected by having the Holy Spirit indwelling you. And they don't do that. There's no hope for them. Let's go on. <clears throat> Mr. Jones, let me say something. Yeah. When I was going to school, I never was an outstanding student because it just didn't interest me. This, on the other hand, interests me to the point where I study every day. Now, Mr. Jones, it's obvious to me that I, I am going to end up in a, in a better place than I would have if I had the same attitude I had going to high school and the different schools I went to. But no, I'm drawn to this. I want to understand. And now I also want to give to somebody else to see what I'm seeing. But see, that's God's supernatural move upon my life. But now I understand the whole principle about understanding, studying to get understanding. So now you can be an asset instead of somebody that needs help. Exactly. Exactly. Which is what most Christians don't want to do. They don't want to put in the time and the effort and the sacrifice. Which there's a price to pay. As simple as that. Now, we want to take a look at people that are dependent upon organized religion. I'm talking about the organized church genre as it currently exists. Are they going to be prepared when this thing manifests. <clears throat> Scripture indicates when Christians who do not understand the true meaning of the life of Christ, what is the true meaning of the life of Christ? Sacrifice. Being willing to be a follower, a learner, of Christ which means total commitment which is not demanded by organized church religion give unto others even as they have given unto you what is being brought forth today is the the Joel Olstein genre of being prepared for a cushy life in the here in the now having all that you are promised given to you on a physical plateau never going into the spiritual aspect of the life of Christ never going into the inheritance that comes forth from the life of Christ everything is coached in terms of physical abundant receptivity to the traditions the interpretations of the leadership as to what the scripture is saying never encouraging people to search the scripture for themselves test what's being said no what's being given is accept what's being said unquestionably because that's what it is that's what it means and there's nothing else involved well where's it leading to what we're saying here Scripture indicates when these beings make their appearance and Christians who do not understand the true meaning of the life of Christ are exposed to the allure of these Luciferians and their lifestyle, they're going to forsake the way of Christ because they're going to come under such an alluring Uh, um, comprehension of these Luciferians. The Luciferians are going to come in one of two ways. They're going to either come in an alluring way or they're going to come in a tormenting way. Those are coming in an alluring way. Their lifestyle, the things that they do, are going to be so impressed upon the Christians they're going to look at Christianity as something that's not worth pursuing. Turn to 1 Timothy 4th chapter, verse 1 to 3.
Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. So this is an emphasis on the part of the Holy Spirit saying, pay attention, this is going to happen. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. What is the faith? How would you define the faith? Belief in God's, in, in Jesus' ministry. Teachings, principle, lifestyle. His word, in other words. What he tells us yeah. to do as a way of life. They're going to depart from that. Why? Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines. What are doctrines? Doctrines are teachings of devils. What are devils? Demonians. Superior intelligences beyond the human. They're going to make an appearance and they're going to demonstrate a lifestyle that to the human looking at it is going to sound so alluring and so beneficial that they're going to lay aside their faith in Christ and emulate the lifestyle of these and the teachings of these individuals. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having the conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Now, Chris, you might remember them. I'm not sure. During the time of the UFO phenomenon back in the 80s, there was a group called the Ra Ra Raelians. Raelians, yes. I'm Raelians. Raelians. You remember them? I, I do. They were a group patterned after an individual called Raelius who was from the planet of Venus, mm -hmm. who appeared to this individual who was the leader of the Raelian group, uh, which they, I think they originated in uh, Quebec, Canada, French-speaking Canada, mm -hmm. and demonstrated a, a lifestyle that so floored this individual. The lifestyle was basically that you can emulate the highest form of intellect, of perception of life, by carrying out this strict diet, by uh, uh, by uh, following the life principles of this celibacy, uh, dedication to the attunement of the universe, the creation that will reveal itself to you through abstinence of this and following that. Right. And the Raelians Re totally bought into that and uh, if there were any Christianity among them, it was laid aside long ago sure. to follow Relius. That's an example of what he's talking right. about here. And of course, Relius um, you know, appears to them as this majestic uh, Nordic looking individual with a glory and their, uh, their um, <coughs> uh, UFO vehicles and the life of the society that he Propagated them as living in was so admirable and so um, breathtaking. Same thing with Adamski. Right. Same thing with Van Tassel. Uh, these guys appear and they show how superior life could be in their own uh, lifestyle. That, you know, what you're doing, what you're following is. Um, false. It's, it's not something that's going to benefit benefit you. This is what you should be doing. And I remember we had our times, my friends and I, back in the 60s, we were eating this stuff up. Because uh, the Adamski Chronicles and the things that he was being told, and they gave diagrams of uh, uh, the propulsion systems and the uh, <clears throat> life that they were living in their abodes, and things, and we would sit down and remember my brother was really gung-ho about all, all of that and uh, several of our friends until, until, because at the same time I was getting this flack as a Christian from the churches and the pastors and the teachers oh, you don't ask questions about this, you don't pursue that that belongs to God, the secret things belong to the Lord and 
shake my head. And I said, do you really believe that? Is that, is that what what's being taught? And, you know, I made a very dim view of Christian Christianity at that point. People are going to get the same view because organized religion is not preparing them <clears throat> for the true life of Christ. Mm -hmm. The one thing that shook us out of that was the understanding by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit would say, okay, follow that. Let's see where it leads. And the first thing that became apparent to me was that there was a, such a difference of what each one was saying. Uh, the Raelians were saying this, the Adamskyites were saying that, those that were reading your Rancher book were saying this. No similar uh, traditional truth being taught, everybody giving his own okay. version of the truth. That was the first intonation that something's not right, right. here. Yeah. Okay. So there seems to be a mainstream um, focal point, the fountain of youth. These different you know, diets and habits and, and indoctrinations and things like this will get to a place where you can live longer. Now we also know Methuselah, 969 years old. Okay, so now, but these are all still emulations of eternal life. Mm. Eternal life, is, you know, Jonesy, is the ultimate thing. And we've already accessed it. We have our, our ticket to get in type of thing. But man's pursuit has been given a distortion of eternal life. You can perceive this or you can pursue this. And you can have measured, you know, modicums of, of extended life, better life. But you're not getting to the eternal life except through Jesus. Well, in order to come to that conclusion, you have to have the Holy Spirit. If a man hasn't entered into, if a man's not born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 99.999 tenths of the human race can't reach that point. Uh, a good percent of people that call themselves Christians can't reach that point because they aren't born again. Right. So along comes an individual that presents the appearance of something desirable to these people. They have no way of gauging what he's saying objectively. Mm -hmm. You take a look at the Buddhist religion, you take a look at um, a lot of these uh, religions, it's the same thing. They're being given principles that sound good. My brother was a Nichiren Shoshu Buddhist, would uh, sit at a th the little uh, a th uh, the altar with Shrine. his Gohansen yes. on the wall, <laughs> and the little bell jangling for hours. Because, Yoko yes, because he believed he was getting in harmony with the universe. If somebody comes down in a UFO or makes contact with somebody and shows them themselves as a vision of glory, you got nothing to compare that sure. with. Sure. The same thing is going to happen to Christians because they don't have a true, a true comprehension of the Lord. Because they're not taught. All they're taught is only God and angels and the devil. Yeah. And you don't question... You just get the basic salvation message and you serve God. How are you going to compare that to a being that comes to you and tells you this is a reality? Mm -hmm. you got nothing to compare to unless you've gone into the scripture and you can see what the Lord is talking about. <clears throat> My son, number one, you're a son of God. Number two, you have the authority of God. Number three, you can see from an eternal perspective and then you can see the lie that this guy is promulgating because you have the truth to compare it with. Brother Jones, thank you for your life of sacrifice to feed us the truth, Brother Jones. <laughs> so all these groups are pretending to offer celestial life. That's what it looks like to sure. a human. That it, sure. It's a celestial life. But um, as you say, there is no eternality to it. No. It's all relativism. The New Age. You find a panoply of different teachings in the New Age all purporting to give you the truth. And it's earth-based. Well, some of it is, is um, some of way it's, out it's there. heavenly based. Yeah, a, a false concept of uh, the heavens. Mm -hmm. And so the Bible is telling us if a Christian doesn't fortify himself to really understand what Christianity is all about, he's going to be wide open to fall for this. 
Because even now, Christians are hard-pressed to stand for what they believe in. Because what you have now is organized religion telling you that the word is open to interpretation. Mm -hmm. Not telling you that there's one interpretation of the scripture, one truth, and anything contrary to that is non-truth. No, the leaders are buying into this plurality of interpretation of the word. So what are the people going to do? They're following the leaders, following what the man says. They're, they're being wide open for deception on a massive scale. But let's go on. Scripture teaches, now we're going to go to the other side of the coin. Scripture teaches in contrast to Satan, the harlot city, and the beast who capture the human race through their alluring intelligences, others will influence, excuse me, influences, others will enslave humanity through their tormenting conditions of existence upon humanity. Turn to Revelation 6, verses 7 to 8. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the, vo the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beast of the earth. Now when it says kill with sword it means that they have power over a quarter of the human race to bring these conditions into being so should we understand referring specifically to the sword that the killing is human groups against human groups yes yes it's talking here about <clears throat> inciting humans to wholesale slaughter and it also goes to talk about hunger. Hunger comes from a Greek term, limos, which means famine, and with death. Death comes from a Greek term, thanatos, which means a vast array in which people are killed. Many different ways in which people will experience death. And, last of all, with the beast of the earth, meaning the animal kingdom will turn on the human kingdom. It's going to make life a horror for a quarter of the human race. Turn to Isaiah. Twenty-four, verse seventeen to eighteen. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. The torment conditions are going to fall on the earth. And they're going to come down upon a quarter of the human race. It shall come to pass that he who flee from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. He that cometh up out of the midst of the pit to be taken in the snare, for the windows of heaven are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. It's talking about the connectors. Remember, we talked about doors, windows, separators. Just as you have windows and doors in heaven, that when they're open, these things come through. And basically, 
They can come through as a blessing. They can come through as a curse. Uh, YCVH fed three million people with the corn from heaven. It's a blessing. He also wiped out hundreds of thousands of them with the hailstones. Well, this, none of it's going to be a blessing. Hell's going to open up. The separators from there are not going to be separated anymore. Stuff is going to come up and literally make the human race's life a nightmare. People are going to be fleeing. They're going to be basically uh, run over and snatched by some snatch and run dimension creature taken down to the caverns, done away with. Other creatures are going to be caught, brought up and ultimately be caught up in the snare of the judgment <coughs> that's going to fall on the earth by the Lord and the, the saints. This thing is going to be a charnel house. What does that mean? That means that those that have been caught up with the alluring of their gods are going to cling to them with everything they've got. They're going to cling to them for protection. They're going to look to them to be saviors. Turn to Revelation, 13th chapter. Verse 4. <clears throat> and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Why are they flocking to the beast? For protection. And nobody can beat him. He's undefeatable. So they'll bow down and worship them. They don't worship the Satan. These, 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 these have presented themselves as an alluring uh, um, reality that the humans who are fleeing from death and hell and all the dark side creatures are fleeing to for protection. Life on, the, on earth, the human race, during this period of time, is a nightmare scenario. You wouldn't want your dog to be here. Mm -hmm. What is the end of it? Destruction. Because God is only going to be embraced by those who have the Holy Spirit in them. And whose names are in the Book of Life. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's well, interesting, Mr. Jones, to me right now, is that the Father has done all this for the sons, okay? That's, we all know that. But the thing of it is to see, to the point where the sons are going to be disseminating the, the judgments, and that just boggles my mind that we get to suffer through the crap, and then we get to, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. So is it ours now then? Sure. That's why you're allowed to do it. You've suffered with him. Mm. Remember, you, you, your enemies are his enemies. So you could say vengeance is part of the inheritance. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will close with this. Turn to Psalms 149. Six and seven, one forty nine. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two edged sword in their hand, to execute vengeance upon the heathen, and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains, and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, This honor have all his saints. Praise you the Lord. Amen. You suffer with them, you're going to be glorified together. And they know it. <laughs>